Hello, in this video we're going to talk about marginal product and then do a number of calculus-based examples. The preliminaries. Marginal product gives the change in output from using one more unit of a particular input. There are two common marginal products, the marginal product of labor and the marginal product of capital. The marginal product of labor gives the change in output from using one more unit of labor while the marginal product of capital gives a change in output from using one more unit of capital. Marginal product is a slope concept, showing the change in one variable from a one unit change in another variable. So the change in output divided by the change in labor is a way of thinking about marginal product. But in terms of calculus, a slope is nothing more than a derivative or a partial derivative, and that's how we're going to derive our marginal products. The derivative of a production function with respect to labor gives the marginal product of labor. The derivative of the production function with respect to capital gives the marginal product of capital. Why is marginal product important? Many decisions are made on the margin. Marginal product gives the answer to what happens to output when we hire a little bit more of an input. The benefit of using a little bit more of an input is the increase in output, which the firm can then later sell. Using the cost minimizing input mix requires comparing marginal product per dollar spent on inputs and then substituting towards the input that gives the most marginal product per dollar spent. The behavior of marginal product affects the firm's cost. When the marginal product of labor is falling in the short run, because of diminishing marginal returns, it becomes increasingly more expensive to produce additional units of output. Marginal cost rises, and total cost and total variable cost both increase at an increasing rate. So let's start with our examples. We're going to start with the short run first. Here, labor is going to be our variable input, and capital is, by default, fixed. So MP subscript L represents the marginal product of labor. And here is our short run production function. Output, the quantity of output, equals 2 times L, where L is units of labor. Marginal product of labor is going to be the derivative of this production function with respect to L. So the derivative of 2L is 2. Here the marginal product of labor is constant. Every time we hire one more worker, output goes always up by 2 units. Here we have a nonlinear production function. Output equals 0 0.25 times L squared. So marginal product of labor, once again, is a derivative. So taking the derivative of this, this 2 comes down in front. So it's going to be 2 times 0 0.25. And then we're going to subtract 1 from the exponent. That's just following the rules of uh, differentiation here. And we're left with 0 0.5 L. Another example. Taking the derivative of this production function, the 1 half comes down in front, so 1 half times 10 is 5. Then we have to subtract 1 from this exponent, so 1 half minus 1 leaves us with an exponent of minus 1 half. And we could follow the rules of exponents by moving this L to the minus 1 half down into the denominator. And number 4. The marginal product here, the derivative of 100L is 100, and the derivative of L squared, bring the 2 down in front, and then subtract 1 from the exponent, you're just left with minus 2L. And if we want, we could evaluate any of these marginal products at a given value for L. So if L equals 30, for example, plugging 30 into the marginal product equation, we see that the marginal product of labor is 100 minus 60, or 40. Here's another example. Uh, this time we're making uh, k present, but we're going to fix k at a level here in the short run equal to 25. So k doesn't change in the short run. It is stuck at 25. So making that substitution and now simplifying. Here is our short run production function. Let's get marginal product from it. So the 1 fifth comes down in front. 1 fifth times 5 just leaves us with 1. And then Dealing with the exponents here, we have L raised to the minus 4 fifths power. And we can bring that down into the denominator. Example 6. Here we have a cubic production function. 
taking the derivative here with respect to L, 40L is 40, then 8L squared becomes 16L, and then over here bringing down the 3 in front and subtracting 1 from the exponent. So simplifying all of that, here is our marginal product of labor. Let's move on to the case where we have two variable inputs in the long run where labor and capital can both be varied. So here's our production function. Now we're going to be using partial derivatives. So here the marginal product of labor is a partial derivative of the production function with respect to labor. So here we're holding k as a constant, treating it as a constant. So bringing this one half down in front from the exponent on L and then subtracting 1 from that exponent on L. This is our result, just simplifying slightly. That is the marginal product of labor. The marginal product of capital, MP subscript K, is a partial derivative of the production function with respect to capital. So the exponent on the K term comes down in front. In this case, it's also 1 half. Subtracting, subtracting 1 from that exponent on the K term and simplifying we have the marginal product of capital. Another example, the marginal product of labor, the exponent on the L term comes down in front, subtracting 1 from that exponent on the L term. We get 30k squared L squared as the marginal product of labor. And the marginal product of capital, the 2 on the exponent here on the K term comes down in front, Subtract 1 from the exponent on the k term, and you have the marginal product of capital. Another production function, slightly different functional form. The marginal product of labor is just 3.5, always constant in this case. Every time we hire one more worker, output goes up by 3.5 units. And likewise, the marginal product of capital is going to be constant, but this time constant at 4. Every time we use one more unit of capital, holding labor fixed, output goes up by 4 units. And another production function here. The marginal product of labor, this 8KL, will just become 8K when we take the partial derivative of that expression with respect to L. This KL squared, bring the 2 down in front, subtract 1 from the exponent on L. We get that result. And then finally, this last term, going to bring the 3 down in front here off the exponent of the L term, and then subtract 1 from that exponent on the L term. And just simplifying, 3 divided by 15 just leaves us 5 within the denominator, and we're done. And now the marginal product capital, partial derivative of the production function with respect to capital. Here, again, we're holding the other variable, in this case, L constant. So the derivative of 8KL is just 8L. So here, the partial derivative of 8KL is just 8L. The partial derivative of KL squared is just L squared. And then finally, this last term, we're left with L cubed divided by 15. All right, that's it. I'll stop here.